In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My friends, the Lord be with you. Good morning. Let's begin our celebration of Eucharist as we always do by standing before God's holy altar, bringing to the altar all of our struggles, our sins, our imperfections, asking God to have mercy and pardon on us. And with humble and contrite hearts, we pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins and bring each of us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May the working of your mercy, O Lord, we pray, direct our hearts aright. For without your grace, we cannot find favor in your sight. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. I knew their plot because the Lord informed me at that time. You, O Lord, showed me their doings. Yet I, like a trusting lamb led to slaughter, had not realized that they were hatching plots against me. Let us destroy the tree in its vigor. Let us cut him off from the land of the living so that his name will be spoken no more. But you, O Lord of hosts, O just judge, searcher of mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. The Word of the Lord. Save me from all the pursuers and rescue me, lest I become like the lion's prey, to be torn in pieces with no one to rescue me. O Lord, my God, in you I take refuge. Do me justice, O Lord, because I am just, and because of the innocence that is mine. Let the malice of the wicked come to an end, but sustain the just, O searcher of heart and soul. O just God, O Lord my God, in you I take refuge. A shield before me is God, who saves the upright of heart. A just judge is God, a God who punishes day by day. O Lord my God, in you I take refuge. Have you also been deceived? 
Have any of the authorities or the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd, which does not know the law, is accursed. Nicodemus, one of their members who had come to him earlier, said to them, Does our Lord condemn a man before it at first hears him and finds out what he is doing? They answered and said to him, You are not from Galilee also, are you? Look and see that no prophet arises from Galilee. Then each went to his own house. The Gospel of the Lord. As we journey farther along our Lenten path, and we listen to the Gospels these past two days, we realize that Jesus is causing quite a commotion. Jesus is the talk of the town. They want to know who he is, where he's from. How does he speak the way he speaks? Now, the Jews of Jesus' time were very familiar with false prophets, sort of like we're very familiar with celebrities. And sometimes we listen to their philosophy of life and can be a little distracted. And in our own world now, the different political bends that people have, different philosophies, different views on spirituality, religion, it causes quite a commotion. And Jesus' day, Jesus was the commotion. And yet, he was so different than the other voices that they were hearing. He was truth spoken. The word of God spoken in the people's midst. And some had a heart that was open to hear those words, to recognize who he was, the Christ. And it's ironic, the very people who should have recognized him were the ones who refused, mocked him, mocked the people who believed, even mocked one of their own, Nicodemus, a member of the Sanhedrin, basically was saying to their own brother, their own colleague, so you believe this, this crackpot too? But I'm guessing, and I'm sure some scripture scholars do as well, that they didn't really think that Jesus was a crackpot. Just the opposite. They probably actually realized who he was. And that terrified them. And you say, Father, why would that terrify them? Weren't they waiting for Messiah? Wasn't that the, the prayer they waited to have answered? Of course it was. But it wasn't convenient for them. Because if they took Jesus at his word, it mean, meant something had to change. More importantly, someone, they had to change. Because they weren't living the truth. They were nice and comfy. They had a great gig going on. They were respecting the community. They had an alliance with their occupying force. They made their little niche. The last thing they wanted was a Messiah to come along and destroy everything they had, change their world upside down. And those of us who believe realize that when we do let Jesus in our lives, he does change our lives upside down. Because that truth, that word of truth, that is so mesmerizing, it's also very challenging. And at the very same time, it draws us into him. Because it's a word we need to hear. And yet at the very same time, it's so hard for us to put into practice to live by. It's kind of like a little kid, and you want to take that yucky tasting medicine, but your mom would say, well, if you don't take the medicine, you're not going to get better. I know, Mom, but it tastes yucky. And that's kind of how they felt toward Jesus. They didn't want to deal with him. They made him. He made them feel uncomfortable. So today, as we take to heart the words of Scripture, as we continue our Lenten journey, this most unique journey of Lent we've ever had in our lives. The time we 
had so much time to, to think, reflect, to pray, read scriptures, delve more deeply into the mystery of this, this holy season, to realize it's not easy to say yes to Jesus. Because Jesus isn't just asking for lip service. He asks, he's asked us to surrender our hearts to him. And in surrendering our hearts, our lives. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become the body of Christ, our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become the blood of Christ, our spiritual drink.
are friends of my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, with these oblations you receive from our hands, and even when our wills are defiant, constrain them mercifully to turn to you through Christ. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things they eternally endure. And so of all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus the Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial 
know of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your son, Leonard, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that Lenny, who, united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our Lady of the Mount, who blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, Saints Francis and Clare, each of our patron saints and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Friends at home, at this time, I invite you to make a spiritual communion. Let us pray. May your holy gifts purify us, O Lord, we pray, and by their working render us fully pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Look upon your people, O Lord, and as they draw near to the coming festivities, Bestow upon them abundance of heavenly grace, that helped by the consolations of this world, they may be impelled more readily towards higher goods that cannot be seen through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon us.